James, left side of your offensive line, how do you think that's shaping up? This? You've seen Rashid in the mix there, how's he doing? Good. Um, you know, Rashid's a guy that you know we really felt like we could play last year. Um, if the new red shirt rule hadn't gone in place, we probably would have burned his shirt, but we thought we could get, get away with four games. Um, and it worked out that way. Um, so you know, we've been very pleased with him. He's big, he's strong, he's athletic. Um, he needs a thousand reps just to gain the experience. Um, but yeah, so far, so far, so good. How would you sum up your five practices to date? I, I think good. You know, um, you know, we, we lack some veterans, obviously. Um, but in terms of in terms of the co the competition and in terms of the talent. Um, I think those things are good. We need we need some more depth at some positions, obviously. Um, you know, so we'll be looking, you know, to you know maybe bring in some transfers, um, and um, and then obviously we got the rest of the freshmen coming in. So by the time we get to camp, I think we'll be in a good place. But but um, but we we're, we're just a little thin, not in terms of our uh, first two teams, but you know some of the threes, some James. of the threes, and we just we're just a little bit younger across the board. On on that note. Uh, there have been a lot of freshmen that have come in across the country and made big impacts for their teams uh, in college football over the last couple of years. Is it that you think uh, teams, or uh, excuse me, that uh, players are coming in more prepared from high school? Is the coaching better in high school? Or is it that just they're getting into the program earlier with early enrollees and things like that? I think it's that? a combination of everything. I think, I think um, there's more coaches willing to play young guys. Um, that wasn't always the case in the past. There's been guys that I think could probably been ready to play in some programs just didn't do that. I think that's that's one thing. I, I think you know obviously this whole graduating early thing is becoming you know kind of more of the norm where it was really the exception. So I think that's a big factor. There's some guys right now that are getting a bunch of reps right now that are clueless and still figuring it out, which is fine. That's that's what spring ball is for, especially for those mid semester guys. But those guys are going to be so much further along now when it comes to summer camp and have a chance to compete. So I think that's part of it. I do think these guys um, are, are, are playing the game more. Like, we never had 7-on-7 seven seven when, when I was in high school, never. And the fact that these guys are doing 7-on-7 seven seven all offseason at their high schools, in tournaments, they're just playing more football. So I do think that, that helps. And I think probably the style of play. You know, there's people throwing the ball around more that's similar to what people do in seven on sevens and things like that. So I think that helps. Uh, and it just seems like every year the guys seem to get a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, and a little bit faster, too. Where do you see Brandon and Lance kind of fitting into that along those lines? Are, you, are they competing for uh, spots at this point, or do yeah. they have ways to go? I, I would say all those true freshmen, they're just so raw. I mean, they're talented. But they're raw. They're raw mentally in terms of experience. They're raw physically in terms of fundamentals. Um, things that they were able to get away with tackling high or something like that, they just they can't get away with with now. Um, I think all those mid-semester freshmen have all had that welcome to college football moment by now already. Uh, that's a humbling experience. They're not used to that, um, and then they kind of battle through it. They kind of battle back. So I think by the end of spring. Those guys, Lance and, and Brandon, as well as a number of guys, will have made a significant step. And then obviously all summer in camp is going to be important. And then there'll be a handful of those guys, that those freshmen that come in in summer that will you know, be ready, but we'll see. We're so used to this year-round football. What do you think would be different about college football if you guys didn't have spring practice? Oh, I don't know. I've never even really thought about that. I mean, in high school, obviously, it's a constant argument the states that have it compared to the, the states that don't um, you know but the college football I mean I, I don't remember a time where we didn't have spring football and um, I mean you think about us I think the last couple of years we've had like 71 and 75,000 people show up to a practice essentially um, you know, spring ball is important around here it's important for our team it's important for our fans it's important for the community we get more people to show up to a practice than a lot of people get to show up to home games. Is there anything in particular you want to see from Cam Brown this spring, and what will you be counting on him to provide in fall? Yeah, you know, Cam's one of those guys, we got a pretty good idea of, of who he is and, and where he's at. I think the biggest difference right now is, is just his leadership. He's taking a real command of the team. He's taking a real command of the defense. Um, he's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger and more physical. 
Um, so it's just it's that it's that steady evolution that you kind of see with him, uh, him growing and more confident. I think he's I think he's got a chance to have a really big year for us. James, what are these early moments? Keaton, I think the two corners, uh, both Keaton and Marquise are are really doing some good things. And I think you guys have heard me, I don't want to be repetitive, but you guys heard me talk about the further away you are from the ball, receivers and, and corners helps with that. But they have they've been impressive. They both got length, they both got really good ball skills. I think the fact that both of them are fairly high level high school receivers really helps. Uh, they're confident in finding the ball in the air. Um, uh, and they're you know they're not undersized. They're both you know they're both fairly physical at this point right now. So those guys have flashed a lot of really good things. I think there's a buzz and excitement right now with the players and and I think the coaches. And getting back to tackle too, is Rashid just more comfortable on the left side because Saul really has worked both sides. Yeah, I, I think I think really that's probably both of their natural positions, right tackle and left tackle. Um, Obviously, we want flexibility to be able to move those guys around. We can, but yeah, as a freshman, you like to leave them at one spot, and then as they start to gain experience, you like to kind of dual train them. But right now, we just we want to get them confident at one, one spot, one position. James, hey, James. Wednesday, you mentioned three positions of particular emphasis, defensive tackle, uh, safety, and receiver. Week into this thing, feeling particularly better about any of those spots? How do you see things taking out? Yeah, I, I think receiver, um, those young guys are getting a bunch of reps. I mean, Justin Shorter at the end of the year really started to come on. Obviously, Jahan did some really good things for us. KJ did some really good things for us. Um, Daniel uh, really started to come on at the end of the season. Um, so, you know, the Daniel and, and Justin, it's going to be really important that they continue to have a strong spring and go into the summer with confidence. And I think we got a pretty good group there. And now it's who are those next guys that are going to step up that are either currently with us right now um, that that we recruited and signed last year coming in as freshmen or possibly some transfers. When you have a, a second year of new guys on staff, does your, like, do you adjust at all the acclimation period? Did you gather any information about that from last year that you can kind of apply to how you get these guys on staff from comfortable? Do you spend more time other places? How does that sort of work? Yeah, I, I think you know, we talked about that a little bit uh, on offense at the receiver position. So coming into spring, we had our normal install meetings like we have and cut ups and all that kind of stuff. And then I know Ricky, um, I know Ricky and, and, and uh, Coach Parker would stay at night each, you know, each night for an hour or so and go through things a little bit in more detail. Um, I think I think that's been helpful. And then uh, from a special teams perspective, the difference is it's not like Joe's coming in and learning how we've done special teams. Although there's a, there's a lot of parallels of how we've done it over the last eight years, a lot of similar philosophies with me and him. He's coming in to install. So that that's a little bit different. Um, he's just getting more comfortable with our organizational structure, how we do things, how we staff meet, all those types of things. But really a lot of the things that he believes in and how he operates is how we've already done it. So the the transition has been has been pretty good. After two more. James, what were your thoughts on some of the guys at Pro Day yesterday? And do you think some of the better test numbers are a testament to how good the strength and conditioning program is here? I think it's a combination of everything. Um, it's it's the guys, the type of guys that we're recruiting. It's the development in our program. Um, you know, because really, I think a lot of times, and don't get me wrong, these places these guys go in the training centers, and, and they say the same thing. I mean, you know, our guys come in really advanced and then they're just tweaking a few things that are very very specific to the combine um, so I think that combination is, is really good uh, but if you go all the way back to Deej's time at Maryland we've always tested extremely well so that continues to to be the trend the one frustrating thing for us um, it seems to, to happen um, every year is you talk to the guys about sleep you talk to the guys about hydration. You talk to the guys about nutrition for three years. They sign with an agent. Uh, they're thinking about where they're going to get drafted, and they come back and they're like, "God, I feel great. You know, I sleep eight hours a night. I'm eating better. I'm, I'm hydrating. I'm doing all these things. It's amazing. You, know, you stop uh, drinking beer. You know, it's amazing how it, just how you feel." I'm like, "We've been telling you that for three years. You know." <laughs> 
And some guys, I think you guys remember Carl Nassib. Carl was really good like that that last year, and it made a huge difference for him. But it's amazing. I mean, guys came back, and just you could you could tell. Um, you know, I had a conversation. I had all those guys to my house last night and their families uh, for dinner after after pro day, which I do every year. And Trace's mom was talking about how the nutrition and the hydration and the sleep, how he's been sleeping better than he slept forever. I think obviously the fact that they don't have classes helps too, but um, Trace was just talking about how well he's sleeping by changing his diet. You know, so um, that's the one thing. I wish we could get them to embrace a little bit earlier, but again, they got a lot on their plate with classes and distractions. James, how's the transition been for Noah Kane? Do you think it'll be a factor on the field this fall? Yeah, I don't really like to say that about any of the guys. It's just too far out, but good. You know, he's uh, he's blended really well with the guys. Uh, his freshman class, as well as the old old guys, he's got a really good way about him. I can kind of describe him as like an old soul in his demeanor. Um, I think him and a lot of these guys, though, sometimes they put too much pressure on themselves too early. Like they expect to just come in and it's gonna it's gonna happen for them, um, and that's not the case. There's got to be a little patience. And, um, I see I see flashes of really good things, but it's too early for any of these guys to say how much they're gonna. You know, factor in the fall is a lot of time and a lot of competition between now and then. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Thanks.